Hey guys, it's Tanya McKenzie. Wanted to let you know that I started a vlog for a child's memories of cartoons and murder. You know, I did about a year touring and um, book signings and having these great conversations uh, with different readers and new fans. Hey! But there's still a lot of conversation that was meant to be had and something happened this summer um, that kind of gave me the idea that I probably should be vlogging because I don't feel like blogging because I'm a little too lazy for that um, about the book and some things that have gone on. And it's just some things that still need clarity and I still get questions and something just ridiculous happened this summer that I'll let you know about. I went to a family function, right? And um, an older cousin of my mom's decided that she wanted to talk to me about some facts in the book. Now, let me be clear. This book is called A Child's Memories of Cartoons and Murder. A child. So I had to let her know that the memories are from a child's perspective. It's from what a child remembers. So there's a scene in the book where, you know, back in the crack era, things were going on and um, there was some parties that were taking place at my mom's house and I woke up, they started partying while I was asleep on the couch. And I wrote about the party and how I woke up and there were some things going on around me. So they were having a full on kick it session there was little stations and people were smoking in different stations and it was ridiculous. The smell of crack cocaine and those homemade pipes that they used to make with the tin foil and they would burn it. Like, I still know what that smells like. Like if I smell it somewhere, it triggers me. Anyways, so I wrote about the party that I woke up to and they have been partying for hours. You could tell some of them looked a hot mess and all these little stations were going on. They had been partying. And after I eventually fell back asleep, woke up the next day, they were still partying. And then eventually, you know, it's over and everybody starts dwindling out. Well, after one of the functions, my mom and her cousin, I'll leave her name out of this, but they got into a fight in the front yard. So I just remember my mom yelling like, get out, B, and um, they were in the front yard. And I remember she took her purse and she threw all her stuff out in the street because she was like, get out. And you ain't gonna get out, I'm gonna throw all your shit in the street. And they were going back and forth and my mom eventually picked, she was very strong. She picked her up and she body slammed her in these bushes in front of my house. And I'll never forget that because I was like, oh my God, because the bushes, you know them bushes that hurt like hella bad, not not some little nice bush, like the one that's real thorny, like if you walk past it, you're going to scrape your arm. Yeah, my mom picked her up and threw her in the bushes. Anyway, so this summer we were at a little family function and you got to think, these people are about 60 something now, right? Um, she said, hey, Tanya, you know, I want to talk to you. How you doing? And I was like, hey, you know, how you doing? How's it going? Um, went up to her to give her a hug. And so, some people have been very receptive to the book. And some people have not been so receptive. And I hadn't seen her in a while, so I wasn't sure what the reaction was going to be. You know how you have that little anxiety knot in your stomach? Okay, that's where, that's where I was at with it. Anyway, so she's, hey, I want to talk to you. And I was like, okay, you know, um... Let's talk. So she says, I just want to let you know, your mama ain't never beat me up. We didn't get in no fight that day. And I was like, okay, well, not quite what I remember. And I'm telling the story from a child's perspective. So I'm telling you what I remember as a child. Yeah, I just want to make it, sh make it clear that your mom did not beat me up. Well, I'm not exactly sure why you were picking your stuff up out of the middle of the street. And I'm almost sure I was probably the only sober person there. So your memory may differ a little bit than, I don't know, mine. Um, yeah, with that being said, she was pretty hot. She was pretty livid, wanted to let me know that I needed to change some things in the book because that's not what she remembered. 
Keep in mind, they had been smoking for like two to three days straight, okay? So I'm not exactly sure why after 30 years down there, she would wanna have this conversation and she's not debating me whether she was smoking crack. She wanted to talk to me about her not getting into a fight with my mom. Like, are you serious? Is that, that's really what you wanna argue with me about? Is that you didn't get into a fight? Not that you didn't smoke crack for three days. You wanna talk about you didn't get beat up. Well, let me tell you, over the last 20, 30, 40 years, my mom has beat up plenty of people, okay? So if you wound up in that situation, it's because something went down and um, you wanna argue with a child over what she remembers. But that just brings to the point of why I wanna to discuss a lot of the things in the book. Because I don't think people recognize that the things that kids see, hear, and experience, they never forget them. I think people really just assume, oh, kids are so resilient and they, you know, they get over things and they move on. Mm, it's been a good 30 plus years for a lot of the stuff that I talk about in the book. And I remember details like nothing else. So if you don't get anything else out of the next month or so of me going through different chapters in the book, understand this. The things that you do to and around kids will resonate with them for the rest of their entire life. And even if they don't remember it or interpret it the way that you think they should, please believe they will remember. And however they interpret it will be part of who they become, okay? So don't ever think that a kid will forget or it doesn't matter. Um, you think they're not listening. They're always listening. They always hear. They're always sneaking to watch. And even if they can't, they're still interpreting what they think is going on. So be careful with that. And tune back in, in the next couple of days where we'll start the chapters of A Child's Memories of Cartoons and Murder. If you have not read it, I mean, it's fine. We'll go through some things, but you can always pick it up on Amazon. You can go to my website, tanyamckenzie.com. Um, and it's all there, but you know, there's a few things that I think I wanna talk about that isn't really covered completely in the book. So tune in and we'll be uh, discussing a child's memories of cartoons and murder. All right, see you next time.